All right, man. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Man, I'm uh, I'm excited. You always bring a awesome fight. Uh, Gary has shown to be a game player too. So I'm really excited for you two guys to step into the ring or uh, the cage. I'm sorry and absolutely throw down it's going to be a blast yeah it's about time it's uh it's been a long camp so it's uh yeah it's good to finally uh be able to get into singapore and uh lay some hands on a man <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one championship's a really big uh, asian promotion and not many american fans uh you know are familiar with the athletes there so i like to get kind of a little background information on the athletes too um, so you, how did you first get started in combat sports and mixed martial arts? So, oh, let me fix that. Uh, <laughs> that <blank there. laughs> um, so I've been doing Taekwondo as a kid since, uh, since I can remember. So like three, four years old, um, grew up, my dad's, uh, uh owns a Taekwondo school. Um, so I've been doing that forever. I grew up, my whole childhood is pretty much uh, traveling, doing tournaments, doing local tournaments here in South Louisiana. Uh, whoa, whoa, time out, time out, time out, time out. You're from Louisiana? Yeah. Where from? Uh, right now I live in St. Rose, St. Charles Parish, and uh, my martial arts school is in Metairie. I trained in New Orleans. Shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's I've been here since I was a baby, man, since I was four or five years old. I'm talking to you from Baton Rouge right now. Oh, I didn't know that either. That's <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I've been to Baton Rouge a ton of times, obviously, but uh, a bunch of times I trained too. Wow, I didn't know that. Who you train with in Baton Rouge? Um, you know, uh, Mancuso's up there, T-Web, yep. um, all those guys. Uh, T-Web's coming early. back. You heard about that, huh? Yeah, I'm excited for that, man. He's fighting for Eagle FC, right? Yeah, that's going to be awesome, dude. Yeah, it's going to be nice. That's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm man, like watching him fight. When I do jujitsu, I don't do a lot of it, but when I do, um, Josh is, is where I go to school with, too. That's awesome. It's insane. Small world, huh? Small world, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always run into people you know, and it's kind of a, it's a big world, but it's a small MMA yeah. community, you know? For sure. For uh, sure. But yeah, just, um, so yeah, I grew up here traveling, training, uh, doing tournaments, that whole deal. And then, um, you know, as an adult, we uh, we kind of went on with our lives, still trained, right. um, still competed here and there. But then a buddy of mine and my family went and uh, just kind of checked out a local MMA show. Um, obviously, we knew about MMA and the UFC and all that good stuff. And uh, we went to watch it and you know, we kind of was like, man, we should try this. It's kind of cool. Like this <laughs> seems like it would be the next step of some type of martial arts evolution, you know, like right. we've only done one sport. So let's try this other stuff. So we're idiots. So we signed up for a fight. We took a fight with zero hands, <laughs> zero wrestling, zero jujitsu. Right? How'd it turn out? <sighs> Lucky. Luckily, <laughs> both of us got first round KOs. But... <laughs> That's not how it should have played out. We we should have got punished. That's really what should have happened. But we uh, as soon as we signed up for the fight, we started. We stepped in the gym with uh, with a couple of guys. Um, shout out Tran, our original man. He he saved our lives for for a really long time. Yeah. He just showed us what an underhook was and uh, you know how to try to get up from bottom. Uh, basic basic stuff. So we right. took that fight and we continued to sign up for more amateur fights and. Um, my buddy Tran introduced us to um, my now longtime uh, head coach, Sean Gayton, who uh, runs Mid-City MMA, and he'll be in my corner for this fight. So he's 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 been here for the whole ride. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So outside of fighting, what do you like to do, man? You got any uh, hobbies? Crawfish, um, I'm relatively boring, I'd say. You know, we like to spend a lot of time outside. So, yeah. you know, hiking, running, outside sports. I mean, not real extracurriculars but you know we'll play ball uh football basketball that type of stuff just to stay active um but i'm a big family guy before i had a family of my own i was real big into you know my immediate family mom dad brother right. uh, anybody that follows me <laughs> said we're super super close uh my brothers have been in my corner camp training partner since day one so right um and now i have uh obviously my own family so i've got my wife my son ty and my new, uh, well, relatively new, 
10 month old, uh, daughter Mina. So it's been, uh, it's been crazy. This, this last year has been awesome. I got an eight month old and we just found out yesterday. I got another one on the way. Congrats <laughs> man! back to back, huh? Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. That's for sure. We were surprised, but you know what? We want it to. So awesome, let's man. knock them out, man. Yeah. So awesome. whew, it's going to be, it's going to be a struggle, man. I'm still tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Having uh having one kid's one thing, but when you tell people you have two kids, it's like, that's Ooh. weird. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I have two kids. Oh my God. That's different. I'm old, <laughs> I'm not bro. Used to that. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out. You won your title in your last fight against Martin Wynn. Um, round three knockout. And ever since you've come to one championship, you've absolutely been on a tear. Three straight knockouts. Um, what was it like though when you realized your dream of I mean, I'm assuming you dreamed of becoming a champion one day. What was that like winning the belt actually? It's, um, it was, it was a little crazy, you know, like, uh, all these emotions hit you at one time. So you see me immediately after knocking Martin out, the ref calls it, I kind of take a few steps and I just lay down like, man, <laughs> like, obviously I just fought a guy. So I'm tired too, right. but like it all hits you. And I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna have to hold this belt. I'm gonna have to do an interview. Let's try to hold the tears in for, I don't know, 10 minutes. So <laughs> you know, I kind of piece myself together do the interview, you know, get the belt, celebrate, you know, do our thing, walk to the back. And obviously we lose it at that point, but, uh, you know, big embrace for, for me and Sean and then me and my brother, Vin. And, uh, yeah, it all kind of came out. It's just a lot of time, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, but not only by me and this barely by me. It's mostly from my, my family, my right. surrounding crew. You know what I mean? Those are the people that are giving up time, giving up p birthday parties, Mardi Gras, you know, like right. everything, everything. And it's, uh, it's awesome to, to kind of be able to show them that, you know, it was worth it. We put a lot of time into this and, and, um, you know, it's, it's all come, you know, come to a boiling point and we, we won the belt and now it's time to defend it. Right. Right. So speaking of sacrifice, it's Mardi Gras time right now. How hard is it not to eat king cake? Yeah, it's tough. I'll tell you what, but, um, <laughs> I'm not a, I wouldn't say I'm a huge dude for the division. Yeah. I'm a bigger featherweight, you know, but I'm not, I'm not a, I don't ride the line too close. So I always say just a little space for that king cake. You know what I mean? There so, you go. There uh, you go. I've had a taste or two. <laughs> we'll get you a slice from Rouse's. You good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's talk about Gary. Um, he's had a, a meteoric rise in mixed martial arts. The dude is an absolute, just, animal on the ground what has your um training been like for this i know since you mentioned josh i know you got the tim crater uh lineage in in jujitsu i know you've got the hands what's what's training been like for somebody like gary who is uh i'd say like it's kind of like training for a fighter like israel or habib where they're so good in one area um, yeah, yeah. um i understand what it is like to be a specialist so I understand how that game is kind of put together, right? Right. I understand that the other area uh, that's not your expertise is kind of used to facilitate access to the other, right? right. So I, you want to use, if, I, if it's me, I want to use my grappling to get back to the feet so I can knock this man out. If he's a grappler, he wants to use his striking so we can connect and end up on the ground where he has an, you know, his, his advantage, his, his strongest right. chance of winning is going to be there. So um, I understand how it works in reverse. Um, I've worked with a long, long time training partner and, and good friend and coach and mentor and all these good things. Uh, and Ryan Hall spent a lot of time with him. Oh, yeah. Um, and obviously not just for this fight where we train no matter what on and, you know, on and off all uh, all year round since the ultimate fighter. So uh, there hasn't been, I don't know, three, four weeks that's passed that I haven't been at his place or he's been at my place. So, um, it kind of worked out nice that, um, uh, that, you know, Ryan's been, uh, a, a great template and right, learning for sure. piece for, for a jujitsu specialist, but, um, you know, we're just continuing on our track ever since I, I, you know, saw Ryan compete and his skills and his brain for martial arts. Like we've trained together for, for pretty steadily and, not because I was going to end up fighting Gary, but because he's a specialist on the ground. And, you know, I have a couple of things that, that I tried to show him on the feet and 
he's taken it and run with it. And I've tried to do the same with, uh, with the jujitsu skills and just understanding the ground, getting better. Um, uh, and then making that something that I love to do every day. And honestly, I do jujitsu more than I train striking. So it's, uh, it's a really nice, um, it's really nice to find a love for another art right? and not just mixed martial arts, but a very specific art. And then um, obviously training camp's been the same, just a lot of time on the ground, a lot of time doing my thing, a lot of time in the in-between working ups and downs and walls and all this good stuff. So without giving away too much, obviously it's uh, right, of course. a pretty tight, pretty tight game plan. And uh, I think Gary's going to have a hard time uh, getting to me. I think that's part of just becoming an all around martial artist too. You know, um, with MMA, it's, it's, uh, a lot of people criticize Bruce Lee, but Bruce Lee had the right idea of, um, incorporating whatever works. And I feel like that's a big part of becoming a perfectly round, not perfect, but well-rounded fighter. Yeah, that's big, man. Uh, you've, you've got to kind of do what, what the fight brings to you. Right. So like, uh, you've got to fill in the answers with, we call it the martial arts answer. Like what does martial arts say we should do here? Is it, you know, do what you're good at? No, it's what is the answer? And like, if you don't have the answer, we've got to build those skills in that department to kind of round out our game. But, um, it's really cool to, to, you mentioned Bruce Lee, like obviously you see somebody who has had the right ideas as far as collecting information and making it yours and making your, art your own and and express it the way you want to express i do this because i'm a martial artist we have a lot of guys in this sport because they're fighters that's cool too it's Different, just yeah. the path that i took right i grew up doing martial arts and martial arts household so um that's that's the path that i ended up taking and i do this and i train every day you know whatever five six hours a day morning and night and on the weekends and through holidays not because i have to because i i want to i enjoy right. it i love and it's not a job and it's, you know, it does get difficult, obviously. And there's some days where you want to miss, but you want to be a champion. So you can't, and that's just the way things play out. But, you know, I, I do this cause I enjoy it and I love it. And that's kind of the path that, that I've gone down and it's um, it's right for me, you know? Yeah. I want to turn to Taekwondo just for a second here. Um, what do you think about Taekwondo these days? Like Olympic Taekwondo, it's very, uh, they got what the sensors in the suits and stuff like that. Now, are you, yeah. a fan? are you a fan of that? Or are you like the old school way of, of actual kicking. I definitely do like the, the old school way of the, the way we used to actually express the kicks and, and continuous fighting. I do like that you have updated scoring. I do like that yeah. the scoring is real. The, the only issue with that is it doesn't take much to, to trigger those sensors. So yeah. it's a lot of front leg lighter style attacks, right? So a little less, I would say applicable to actual fighting right. just because, you know, if you've got a, I don't know, we've seen Khabib walk through plenty of uh, front <laughs> leg, rear leg kicks. You've <laughs> got to be able to, to have yeah. danger in those things. You've got to be able to, to throw those the right way and scoring points. Shouldn't be the, the point of it. Right. Scoring points should be, a kind of a uh, a byproduct of doing damage right because that's the whole right. point of a martial artist unfortunately we have to fight so if one of us has to walk out of here it's going to be me so we've got to figure out a way to make that work taekwondo right. does it mainly with the legs and the rules keep it in that zone boxing does it with the hands obviously we've got all these different arts that kill you in different ways but that's the whole point you know obviously uh i would love for gary not to die in the ring but the idea is that we're mocking killing each other and then the ref stops in so nobody gets hurt too bad it's, sim it's simulated war you're absolutely right. right so i think we've gone a little bit away from that uh on the taekwondo side of things and and with the scoring system so i uh you know i, I i'm not real real in depth with uh the updated rules and yeah. things like that but i know the way we used to do it was pretty much if i'm dealing out more damage i'm probably winning this fight, right. fight match whatever you want to call it and that's the way I think it should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I agree with you all there. I was, I've, I've been looking into Taekwondo a little bit more lately. It's one of the arts I've, I've neglected, obviously, because of the scoring and stuff. But watching old matches, I'm like, oh, dude, this was awesome. I'm, I'm just that's watch old good stuff shit. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the old school stuff is so, so phenomenal. Like they had, um, I think, um, Athens, Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, all before that, those years and before were like, 
so fun to watch, man. We used to stay up to, you know, I, I was younger at the time, but we'd stay up three, four in the morning, record it before DVR was around. We'd stay uh-huh. up and watch it. And, uh, man, those dudes used to go off. It was very impressive. One of my favorites uh, was Moon Day Sung in 2004 Olympics. He, he, he hurt himself before the, the gold medal match and ended up winning the gold medal. Um, it was beautiful. I, it was one of those Olympic runs. I was like, wow, this is awesome. But uh, That's cool. last, last question, circling it back to the fight here. Go ahead and give me a pitch. Why should everyone tune in to one championship to watch you and Gary duke it out? I think that even the numbers on paper is going to kind of do it for me, man, because uh, Gary's had, what, six fights. His last fight was the only one that he didn't get a finish in. Yeah. Um, I've got four fights with one, uh, 12 fights total. I, I've never gone to a decision, win or lose. So y'all are going to see a finish. You want to see a finish, watch this fight. Uh, I am putting him unconscious or he's going to tap me out one or the other. It's going to happen. We're going to get a finish. This this is not going to go to the end of the, the fifth round. It, it'll go to the fifth round. No problem. But one of us is getting finished. And uh, obviously, I plan on knocking him out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That was beautiful. So uh, where can everybody find you on social media, man? Uh, y'all check me out on pretty much Tan Lee MMA on everything. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Instagram is my main one. So if you got to shoot a message or email for sponsorship info or whatever, that's the one to hit me up on. Get at him. He takes on Gary Tonin, defending his title, one championship. Thank you very much, Ton. I'll be rooting for you, home Louisiana kid, so I love it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, brother. Take it easy. Take care.